Uh, okay, so we are starting the Mishnah Torah. Dun, 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 dun. Right, let, let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can get past this trick question uh, this time. What's the opening line? See if you can find it in the actual thing. Not gonna be tricked. No, not this time. Fool me once. Bashem. Yes, Bashem Bashem Kelolam, one more time. Now, what's the second line? Azlo Ebosh. Yeah. Okay, good. So he starts off like before with Bashem Bashem Kelolam. And uh, we got where we got to, whatever, with that. <laughs> with that. Then he has another line, and this one is just for the Mishnah Torah. Az lo evosh behabiti el uh, Then I will not be ashamed when I gaze upon all of your mitzvahs. Mm-hmm. And that's from Tehillim Kufyu Tes Pasuk uh, Vav, which is the, uh, that's the long parakin the uh, acrostic. I think we'll do, we'll do what we did last time and save this for like when we have a, uh, uh, when we're in between things. I also think you need to do the whole Hukdam in order to see like what he's alluding to by this. So, Hadran uh, Allah uh, to that Pasuk. Okay, so after the first line, then we got the opening of the Mishnah Torah. Okay, so let me find out where it is here. Uh, Hakdama. Okay, so here we go. Kol hamitzvos shenitnu lo lemoshe besinai. You need to take that, or is that I don't know if that's a call. Yeah, just because we're we we we're, were we were about to start. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh... Okay, so. okay, so that's okay. Kol mitzvos nitnu lo lemoshe besinai. All of the mitzvos that were given to Moshe at Sinai, uh, beferusha nitnu. They were given with their. How do you? What's your go-to word for perush? Explanation. Explanation. Good. All right. Good. Because some people say commentary, mm-hmm. and uh, we may have to look into the difference between perush and beur. Um, on the surface, what would you say the difference is between perush and beur in terms of the words? Because they could both be translated as explanation or commentary. Beor seems like more like shot explanation. Okay. Which is like going more in depth. I guess. Okay. So without without guessing as to the nature of the uh, of like the different types of commentary, what's the in the word? What can you tell from the words mm-hmm. themselves? <laughs> uh, beer is like making it clear. Yeah, so beer is, is, is making it clear, right? And what about perush? Like, um, Porish, lifrosh. Take out, uh, like. Separate. separate, right? So I think separate is a more accurate uh, word. I don't know if, he, if these are used consistently, like for specific reasons, but just noting there. Okay, so all of this were given to Moshe at Sinai. Um, and that itself is a machlokas rishonim. Mm-hmm. Right, because what's the other shita? Not that he got all of them at Sinai, but oh, he got some at Sinai, some like in the Midbar somewhere, right? And then some later. Yeah, exactly, right. So that the, they were, they were uh, certain ones were given at Sinai, but then they were they were given later. And also, there are mitzvos that were given before, right? Like what? Uh, uh, right, like the Korban Pesach, Rosh Chodesh. Chodesh. Bris Mila, right to Avraham. So Rambam will, I mean, I guess we'll, um, I don't know when we'll see this, but he takes this very seriously, meaning that all, all of the mitzvot in the Torah that appear later in the Chumash were given at Sinai to Moshe, and then all the ones that were given earlier were renewed at Sinai, mm-hmm. meaning that the reason why we keep Bris Mila is not because Avraham was commanded, but because we got a new, uh, we, 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 it was on the authority of Sinai, yeah. Okay. Is he, is he talking about that later in the Hagdama? Uh, I don't think he talks about it in the Hagdama. I think he, right, so he I don't feel about that acting now. What about uh, 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 you know, Slav Slav and Pinchafini? Yeah, uh, right. So, not, so, yeah, it's pretty clear <laughs> that Moshe had to act and yeah. not in Torah. I don't know what he holds. I, I, nurse, I'm, I don't know where the Ramah addresses that particularly, but it sounds like he would hold that, that Moshe got it at Sinai. And then I guess like, uh, does Ra- is Rashi Lama says that that Miss Alim Mimeno Halacha that Moshe Rabbeinu like forgot it uh, at that incident when they asked him, and then like, mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, he's gonna have seemingly he's gonna have to give explanations like that uh, that Moshe knew all the mitzvos, and then certain halachos I guess uh, either weren't clear to him or or again he forgot. Uh, you know, he, he got. Uh, I think they say the same thing also by Pinchas, right? That the uh, that like when Zimri and, and uh, 
Cosby had their uh, their protest, then like Moshe was like at a loss, you know, something like that. So I, I think he's going to say that Moshe knew the halachos, and then just for some reason either didn't know the particular or didn't implement them. But I think he's going to even say Moshe knew the particular later on. Yeah, so I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> say that one more time. And, and you know, very hard explanation of the making you know, yes. Moshe during the particular. It is definitely very hard. Yeah, it's much easier to say that the halachas were presented in the narrative the way that they were presented in the narrative. Uh, I don't, why, why does Ramam feel it necessary to say that all of the mitzvahs were even at Sinai and not to Moshe at any time that right. they were That's a good question. Given? Because the inclination would be to say that the emphasis is on like Mosaic prophecy, but that doesn't preclude him getting it later on. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, yeah, I'm not, not sure. Well, I guess I'll keep an eye, uh, eye out for, uh, for answers. Oh, you know what? I keep on forgetting. Now that I have this new and improved Rambam, not the improved yeah. perfection, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I wonder if, um, I, I'm going to try to remember, I know I'm going to forget that. I'm going to try to remember to look on the side. Uh, I should really do this ahead of time now that, I'm, now that we're actually using the Mishnah Torah uh, to see if he directs us to anywhere else in the Mishnah Torah with Rambam. Uh, comments on these things. Okay, so yeah, I think I'll have to do that later. I'm not going to do that during cheer. Um, okay, so <laughs> they were given with their, their parish. Shnemar, as it is stated, Now, I think it would be a good precedent for us to start to look up Sukkim in context. Okay, so if you want to get a Tanakh, you can. Um, and uh, I uh, actually, if you want to get one for me too, please. <laughs> I'll put this on screen, but I feel like with Chumash, I'm familiar with it, but you know, when, when we go into other areas of Tanakh, then not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for Yeah, I spent a lot of time in Malachi today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unexpectedly, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, in Shemos Chaf Dalid. Um, and um, my practice, by the way, this is just, uh, don't, don't take this as like good or bad, just take this as what I do, is when I'm looking up sources that are referenced, I will read the largest context possible in English and then hone in on the Hebrew for the part that I need. And if I need to learn it, then of course I'll learn it in Hebrew. But in term, for, for our purposes, especially since this is a Pekiyosh here, then I feel comfortable uh, doing that. Um, so this is in the context of at the end of Mishpatim, which I think there's a chronological ambiguity here, right? Because you have um, you have Harsinai, uh, Mama Harsinai, and then Yisro, and then the people basically tell Moshe to go up and get all the, the mitzvot, and then you have Parshas Mishpatim, and then it's, I think it, I'm pretty sure it's unclear when this chapter 24 is happening, mm. uh, whether it's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. So let's see here. So this is, um, yeah, to Moshe, he said, go up to you, uh, I'm just using our scroll here, go up to Hashem, you are a not of Nevihu and the 70 of the elders of Israel, and you shall prostrate yourselves from a distance. And Moshe alone shall approach Hashem, but they shall not approach, and the people shall not go up with him. Moshe came and told the people all the words of Hashem and all the ordinances, and the entire people responded with one voice, and they said, all the words that Hashem has spoken, we will do. So I guess plain shot, if you're assuming that everything is in chronological order, then he's telling, then I guess this is describing him telling them all of the mishpatim that he just said, mm. right? Um, okay. Um, Moshe wrote all the words of Hashem. He rose, er, arose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent the youths of the children of Israel and they brought up burnt offerings and they slaughtered bulls to Hashem as, pe as feast peace offerings to Hashem. Moshe took half the blood and placed it in the basins and half the blood he threw upon the altar. He took the Sefer HaBris, right? The Book of the Covenant, uh, and read it in the earshot of the people. And they said, everything that Hashem has said, we will do and we will obey. Moshe took the blood and threw it upon the people. And he said, behold, the blood of the covenant that Hashem has sealed with you concerning all these matters. So there's some sort of new bris going on here. Mm -hmm. Moshe, Aaron, Nadav, and Vihu, and 70 elders of Israel ascended. They saw the God of Israel. Here's the sketchy part. They saw the God of Israel and under his feet was the likeness of sapphire brickwork. And it was like the essence of the heaven in purity. Against the great men of Israel, uh, of the children of Israel, he, should, he did not stretch out his hand. They gazed at God, yet they ate and they drank. This is a famous machlokas between, uh, I mean, I say, I mean, I don't know who the original players are, but Unklos and Rambam, right? Mm -hmm. Unklos says that they rejoiced as if they were eating and drinking, and, and that was a good thing, and it had to do with their korbanos. Rambam says that they became overly involved in a physical 
perception, their, their, their perception of God was tainted by physicality, mm -hmm. uh, which is why it's such a gross anthropomorphic decision, uh, description here. Okay, then we get to our, start getting to our psukim closely, I guess. Um, Hashem said to Moshe, uh, send me to the mountain and remain there and I shall give you the stone tablets and the teaching and the commandment that I've written to teach them. Okay, so that's our puzzle here. So let's read this in Hebrew. So now Moshe is going up again. And I will give to you the stone tablets, the Torah, the mitzvah, and the Torah and the mitzvah, right? So Torah, we said before, literally means teaching or instruction or system of law, mm -hmm. right? Like Zosa, Torah Sa'ola or Torah Sa'chatas, that system, you know, uh, and, uh, but teaching and instruction is, uh, is I think the most accurate, uh, neutral translation and the, and the mitzvah and the commandment. Um, Asher kasavti lahorosam, that I have written to instruct you, uh, to instruct you, or to instruct them. Vayacham Moshe v'yoshua v'misharoso, and then Moshe got up, and Yoshua, his uh, servant, vayal Moshe el har ha'elukim, and Moshe went up to the mountain of God, vel hazakinim amar, and to the elders he said, Shvu lanu bazeh, shvu lanu bazeh nashuv aleichem, was that sit there? Yeah. yeah, how does article translate here? Wait for us here. Yeah, yeah, it's being used figuratively until I re until we return to you. Vhine Aharon Bahur Imachem and Aaron and Hur will be with you. Me bald varim yigash alehim. Um whoever has is a uh bald varim will approach them. Okay, I don't know what that is. Vial Moshe El Hahar, Vaichas Hanan Sahar, Moshe went up to the mountain and and the cloud covered the mountain, Vaishkunk voted Shem Al Harsina, Vaichasehu Anan Sheshis Yamim. And uh, a cloud, the uh, the sorry, the glory of Hashem descended upon Har Sinai, and a cloud covered it for six days. Vayikra el Moshe bayom hashvi mitoch and uh, and he he called out to Moshe on the seventh day from the midst of the cloud. Umarik vod Hashem keish ochelus brosha har leine bnei Israel, and the appearance of the glory of Hashem was like a consuming fire at the top of the mountain in the eyes of all of Israel. Vayavu Moshe v'socha anan, and Moshe went into the midst of the cloud vayal el hahar, and he went up to the mountain. Vayhi Moshe bahar arbaim yom arbaim laila. Right, so this is, so the upshot of all this, I mean, I guess it's not, now it's even really much harder to tell the context of what were those chukim and mishpatim that he was talking about before, because this sounds like where he's going up for 40 days to get the Torah, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not sure about this. All I know is every time I've ever tried to learn this, it's become very confusing with the chronology and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and all the goings up and all the comings down. We're not going to get entangled in that because I think that's a little bit far afield. Uh, but that was the pasuk of um, the... Uh, where is it? The Etan Alecha is Luchos Evan Vatorah Mitzvah. Okay. Now here's the most important line in the Hagdama, <laughs> arguably. Okay. Torah Zo Torah Shabichsav U Mitzvah Ze Perusha. Torah is the written Torah, the written teaching. Mitzvah is its explanation. Vitzivanu laasos ha Torah al pi ha mitzvah, and we are commanded to do the Torah according to the mitzvah. U mitzvah zo hi ha nikreis Torah sheba al peh, and this mitzvah is called the oral Torah. Right. Where did that pasuk ended that I wrote? For them? Yes, I noticed that this time also. I get, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like looking stuff up <laughs> and getting a bigger picture is better. Yes. I feel like the, I think the Rambam might be making reference to the Gemara and Brachos, which has like a similar structure. Yeah, it says it's like the Mishnah, right? And the... Uh, yeah, yeah. I can read it. Uh, yeah, so you know what, let, let, what we're going to do is we're going to take the Raman's advice that we said yesterday and not try to explain the Raman through the Gemara. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, and, 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 and I'm not saying that we should ignore Gemaras, but I want to try to take the Raman when he was so emphatic about that yesterday. Yeah. Take that seriously, okay? Yeah. Um, we'll open it up to, uh, if we need to consult Pirushim on Torah Shavichsav, you know, <laughs> like, but yeah, okay. All right, so what we, so he, he, the reason why I say this is the most important line in the Mishnah Torah is because we've already seen in the Hukdamah to the Parish of Mishnayos that he intends for the Mishnah Torah to be all of Torah Shabal Peh, okay? And he used the line there, and he's going to use a similar line here. You'll read Torah Shabal Peh, and then you'll read this, and you'll know Kol Torah Shabal Peh Kula, and you won't need any other book in between. So this is where he's defining Torah Shabal and Torah Shabal Peh, and they're explaining their relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the interesting thing is mitzvah is Torah Shabal Peh, right? Right? Like if you asked me, I mean, I, I, I know you can come up with arguments for both, but if you asked me, 
uh, which one would you call mitzvah, Torah, and which one would you call teaching? I would have said that Torah Bechsav is mitzvah and Torah Valpeh is teaching because Torah Bechsav is where God actually commands it. Mm. And, and Torah Valpeh teaches us what it means. I see. You know, or instructs us in how to do it. Right. But he's saying, no, Torah Bechsav is the teaching and the commandment is Torah Valpeh. Does that mean that the like Iker is the Torah Valpeh? Um, I'm, uh, so I, I'm also tempted to, I don't know if it's the same Gemara you were tempted to quote, um, but hold on, maybe I could quote it from the Rama. <laughs> Just one second. Um, just one second. I think I could quote it from the Rambam. Yeah. If, if the Rambam says it. Oops. All right. I'm, I'm looking, if you want to look and see, I, I don't know if this is going to lead anywhere. Hilchus Mamrin, which is in Sefer Shoftim, which is the last book, and this is the third section. Um, Salud. This might not lead where I thought it led. Hold on. Um, never mind. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. No. 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 Um, I really feel like it's a Rambam, though. Let me, let me, I'm just going to, uh, maybe, maybe the phrase is not the one I'm thinking of. Let me just look here. Um, no. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what I was thinking of. I'm pre pretty sure there's a statement that says that the Iker Habris was Krusa al Torsh mm. Um And... I think it's talking about that bris that we read in the, in the Torah Kassav there, like that, that bris, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure where I'm getting that from. Uh, question on the wrong one. Yes. Um, if he says that you don't need any other book for Torah Shalpeh besides this, and I guess he also needs Torah Shalpeh. Right. Um, what does he do with all the Agadotas that aren't in here? Um, you want to take a detour? <laughs> um, Wait, what was the question? Yeah. Can you repeat what Nebi's question is? Yes. He said, if all, if the Ramam says that you can read Torch of and then read this book and uh, no Torch of Pakula, what does he do about all of the Agaritas? Didn't he mean specifically Halakha? Uh, so we will see that. Yes, we will he see that. You don't need any other book. Uh, for Torch of Pakula. Specifically, you don't need the Halakha. For acting? For like how? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so this is going to actually. Let's, let's, <laughs> Sorry, okay. isn't that what he said in the Sefer Mitzvah? He did say that in Sefer Mitzvah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, here he uses the Lashon of Torah Shalpeh, though, which I think is where Zevi's question is coming from. Okay, um, but uh, the uh, I have to read this. Okay, hold on. Um, I don't... Oh, wait, do I have it on my computer? Just one second. Uh, detour to the Ramban. Ooh, Ramban. Mm -hmm. got to start with Ramban. Uh, the Kiyoshi, yeah. <laughs> That would be Rabbi Zimmer's. Uh. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, this is promising. I have a, a picture file called the Ramban on Agarita. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Okay, so I don't even need to go into the library. Um, although I do need to reshare the screen. Uh, just one second here. Uh, I don't know where to find it easily, and it's not very long, so I'll just read it and I can share it later. Yeah, so this is in the Ramban's Disputation with Pablo Christiani. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one. Uh, and movie with Christopher Lee, right? Uh -huh. That's the, uh, yeah. So um, uh, Pablo brings in, tries to prove that Jesus is the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a phase, I think, I think this is a distinct phase in the dialogue where he brings rise from Agatha. Right. Okay. So the Ramban says, and I'm reading the Hebrew uh, from, I don't know which edition this is, says, Sham Shimu Amin Kulam. Uh, listen, everybody. Oh, this is Ramban talking. Frey Paul Sha'alni in Kvar Baha Mashiach Shadibur Boha Nevim. So, uh, Friar Paul asked me, Did the Mashiach who, who the Nevim spoke about, did he already come? Amarti Shloba. And I said, No, he didn't come. The Hebi Sefer Agada, and he brought a book of Agada, of homilies, Sha'amar Bo Kibayom Shachar Besa Mikdash Bo Bayom Nolad, that says, On the day that the Besa Mikdash was destroyed, that was the day that the Savior was born, right? 
Vamarti Anish any and I said I don't believe in it. Okay. So and then the Ramban says, Du ki anachnu, this is a very good Ramban to remember. Yesh Lanu Shlosh Sfarim. We have three types of books in Judaism. Okay. Um uh, I'm just gonna mute you until uh, you have a question because the hearing paper rustling. Okay. First one is the Bible. Okay, and it says Biblia here. The Kulanama Minimbo Emunashlema. We all believe in it with a complete Emuna. Vashini who nikra Talmud. Second one is called the Talmud, who Pirush le Mitzos Torah. It's an explanation of the mitzvahs of the Torah. Ki Batora, Yesh Taryag Mitzos, Veinba Ahas Shalonis Parsha Batalmud. Um, and in the Torah, there are 630 mitzvahs, and there's not one uh, that is not explained in the Talmud. Um, and we believe in it regarding the parish of the mitzvahs. Okay, uh, that's foreshadowing. Okay. Um, and by the way, uh, this is not disagreeing with the Rambam in terms of the Lushan of Talmud and Torah Balpeh, because he's saying we have three books. Yeah. So genres of books. Od Yeshlan Sefer Shlishi, Hanikra Midrash. We also have the third book called Midrash, Rotalamar Sermones, right? Yeah. Sermons. Uh, okay. Um Kamosha Im Yamod Ha Hegamon Vyase Sermon Echad Vaha Mina Shomim Hayatov in Avakasvel. Like if one of the like community leaders, uh the hegemons, um uh gets up and uh, gives a sermon and uh, one of the listeners thinks it's good and writes it down. Does say for Mishi Yamin Botov, Mishle Yamin Bo Lo Yazik? This book, if someone believes in it, it's good, and if not, it, he won't be harmed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I mean, this is a whole other question about like, you know, what authority does God have to have or whatever. Um, but like the Ramban, and we'll see from the Ramban later on, a Garta, even though you can find it written in the Talmud, is not part of Torah Shabal Peh. And the Ramban saying it's not even, really even part of Talmud. It's just, that's where its location is. Mm-hmm. Which is why when he was talking about Talmud, he says, we believe the Perish HaMitzvos in the Talmud. But there's other contents in the Talmud also. Yeah. But I think this will become much clearer when we go to the next source that we're going to do right now. Okay, so in order to understand the Rambam, in this first halacha, we're going to stop learning the Mishnah Torah today. <laughs> yeah, we need to go to the first place where the Rambam defines Torah Shabbat Pan, Torah Shabbat which is the Hakdama to the Parish Mishnayos. Um, and this is the Kafach edition here. Um, and uh, we're doing the first like couple of paragraphs because he not only explains it, but gives, um, he gives uh, examples. Uh, I'm going to share it, share it on screen here. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, so this is uh, Kafech's uh, translation. Okay, uh, and th- this will take, a, it won't take us a field. It'll just, he includes other stuff that uh, that he apparently didn't feel the need to mention in the Mishnah Torah, uh, but it'll still be uh, relevant uh, in one way or another. Okay, Da, Shekol Mitzvah, so the first part starts out kind of like the Mishnah Torah. Da, Shekol Mitzvah, Shinasana, Karsh, Baruch, Lemosha, Rabbeinu, and this is the very beginning of the period of Mishnah, except excluding the the opening poem and the opening bio of Ani Moshe Hasfardi, um, which I, I did not think that that was uh, relevant for this purposes. And I just realized I've got to plug in my laptop. It just started going dark. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So there we go. All right, Dash, Kol Mitzvah, Shinasana Karsh Barakal Moshe Rabbeinu Nitna Im Lo Im Pirusha. You should know that every mitzvah that God gave to Moshe, He gave it to him with his uh, with its mitzvah. Haya Hakadosh Baruch Hu Omer Lo Hamikra. Oh, you know what? This is the first time we encountered Hakadosh Baruch Hu in any of our uh, readings. I think, right? I think so. Yeah. So, what's your go-to translation for Hakadosh Baruch Hu? Because oh, and I'm asking this by the way because um, I don't know for sure uh, in terms of well, obviously God has many names. Um, Rambam. So certain Mepharshim, you get the sense that they are using specific names in specific cases for a specific reason. And I get that sense from Rambam. Um, and so it's just good to have that in mind as we read, you know, uh, that he's just not throwing names around willy-nilly. Like on Thursday, like I, I, this is something I, I meant to revisit uh, on Rosh Hashanah. On Thursday, not in this year, but in the uh, uh, Jewish philosophy year, when we were going through the Rambam in his uh, Shuvah Per Gimel, and he's describing God, uh, God is the only one who can weigh the Zechus and Avonos. He calls him Keldeos, mm. you know? And I for, had forgotten that that's in the Haftorah in, uh, on Rosh Hashanah, um, uh, I think on the first day. Um, and so like, to my knowledge, that's the only place where the Ram uses the term Keldeos. And he's not just using it like uh, willy-nilly, you know? So what's your go-to 
definition of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, or a translation even. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. So what's Kaddish, I guess? And not holy. holy. <laughs> yeah. Unique, I guess. Okay, yeah. So, so, well, it's okay. Yeah. I, I was just reading a blog post where you were talking about the definition of Kaddish. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What did I say? You said, removed from physicality. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kaddish is removed from physicality, uh, which in the case of human beings means um, rising above your animalistic nature mm-hmm. to act in accordance with the Talmud Lakim. In God's case, it means literally he, he, uh, he is removed from physicality. He's not physical. And I like the word, so because kadosh literally means separate or removed, but some cases it's separate without value judgment. Like, for example, you call a harlot a kadesha because she set aside for that. Uh, oh, that was like a euphemism. That's another interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, kadesh could either mean designated or set aside, okay. or, it's, uh, or it's euphemism, or there's another thing that uh, Rabbi Zucker uh, explains that. Um, it's part of the institution of uh, Kiddushin because when, when Klai Yisrael got the Torah, then Kiddushos became Usr and they became Chayav and Kiddushin. Hmm. Uh, so they're both institutions of Kiddusha, but in different ways, um, meaning that we refrain from Kiddusha and we are only, you know, uh, enter into marriage through Kiddushin. Um, so it's like part of the same <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's part of the same Matara, yeah. Um, but, uh, but then some cases, yeah, some cases... Uh, <laughs> Yesterday, where the heart came up. You got tremors? <laughs> yeah. Um, in some cases, uh, kadosh means like uh, elevated, and we use it about God. We clearly mean it elevated. So I, the word I like, even though I, I don't, I'll say holy like all the other people, uh, I like the word transcendent, because transcendent implies you're separate, but you're above. So the transcendent one, baruchu, which means the source of, of, of bracha, the source of good. So it's actually referring to the idea I explained in the YouTube video on the Machzor Vitri's explanation of Baruch Atah Hashem and why we switch to third person, that it's a reference to Baruch Kavod Hashem Mimikomo, that God is completely unknowable in his essence, yet he's the source of bracha that we can know. So whenever you're talking about HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the way I think of it is you're referring to the fact that God is the source of all the brachos, which are physical phenomena that you enjoy in this world, or at least you are physical and, and enjoying them. But he is Kadosh, that he's uh, transcendent and above all physicality, you know. Um, and obviously that's not a term that I, I don't think, I mean, I know the Hebrew HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not used anywhere in Tanakh. It's a term that the Rabbanon coined. I don't know, though, if there's an Aramaic equivalent somewhere in like Daniel or something. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I just thought I'd point that out. Okay, so Hayakadosh Baruch Hu Omer Lo HaMikra Ve'achar Kach Omer Lo Perusho Ube'uro V'chol Ma Shekalal Oso HaMikra HaMechukam How's that? Uh, so God would tell him the Mikra, right? The Pasuk, what we call the Pasuk. Mikra is uh, synonymous with the, the Torah books of. And then afterwards he would tell him, it's Perush, it's Be'ur, and everything that is encompassed in the Wizened mikra, I don't know how to say mechukam, right? The the intelligized, the comprehended uh, mikra, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is also a reinforcement for what I said earlier today that I think perush and beer are, are two different things uh, because clearly komasha koloso mikra mechukam is, and once you have that triplicate, it sounds like you're saying three different like levels or, or aspects of, uh, of explanation, right. you know? So I, I don't know what it is. Um, all right, now he goes into what, what seems like a tangent because he, he, he is going to return and give an example of what he means, but we kind of have to make it through this uh, tangent here, which is talking about the seder of, of teaching. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Sure. I mean, I just based on my vague understanding of the conversations, um, parish has um, implies like specificity. Mm, in some way. That would make sense. Okay. And viewer is like depth. Interesting. Okay, um, I mean, I have no idea about the yeah, that, all right, that is interesting. I mean, beer is, uh, I mean, we do, we do use, uh, harking back to Mishle here, we do use beer to mean a well yeah. as well. Is that the same word? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Right. I mean, it's the same spelling, same shorish, right. I assume. Yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. That, that, and that, I, I can see that. And, and I guess if you could, I don't know if this is, you never know if you're engaging in actual etymology or like what Rapesong always refers to as like armchair etymology, where you're just speculating about stuff. <laughs> but, um, we said perish is to separate, you know? So I could see an idea of like 
taking a particular aspect of something <laughs> for particular, but I don't know if I'm just speculating. All right. So Kakai Seder Limuda Yisrael. So this is the order of teaching uh, to Israel. Okay. Haya Bala Ola. So Moshe would come to his tent. Presumably, this is after the 40 days and 40 nights. Nichnas etzlo Aaron Trila. Aaron would enter first into the tent. Vuhumas dir lo hamikra shakibel pam achas umalamdo perusho. And Moshe would uh, arrange for him or order for him the mikra that he received one time. Umalamdo perusho. And then teach him its perush. Vinistalik Aaron. I don't know how Aaron's expected. I mean, I'm, we'll, we'll see what happens to Aaron, but it's like, finally, he tells him the entire mikra once. Like, you got to get it this one time, and that's it. And he's telling Aaron, so then Aaron would, sounds like it says he leaves, but he says, Ubalo liamin Moshe Rabbeinu. So he would leave from, I think, in front of Moshe and go to the right of Moshe. Nignasim achakach Elazar v'itamar banav. Then Elazar and Itamar, his sons, would enter. Master lehem Moshe, k'moshem shehistir Aaron. Whom he's talking. So then Moshe would arrange it for them, like he arranged it for Aaron, and then they would depart. Balo echad mehem small Moshe, Rabbeinu v'hashen eli min Aaron. One would go to the right of Moshe, uh, sorry, yeah, the left of Moshe, the other one would go to the right of Aaron. Nichnasim achach shivim zakenim. This is when you realize that the tent is very big. Umilamdam Moshe gamkeim k'moshe lamad Aaron abanav. And Moshe would teach them in the same way that he taught Aaron and his sons. V'achach nichnasim hamon ha'am, Kol Mavagajem, really big tent. <laughs> After, <laughs> yeah, right. Afterwards, the um, the Hamon, the, the the people, the masses would enter. Anyone who sought Hashem, Umastir Lahem Kadeshi and then he would arrange it for them so that they'd all hear it from him. Okay, Nimsa Sha'aron Shama Oso Hamikra Arba Pa'amim Mimosha. Turn consequently, Aaron heard it four times from Moshe. Ubanav Shamu Mimenu Shalosh Pa'amim. His sons heard it three times, Vazakini Pa'amayim, and the elders two times, Usharha Am Pa'amachas, and the rest of the people once. Um, have you guys heard this before, this whole thing? Yeah, okay, right. It's good to look at every once in a while because it's like uh, mystifying. Yeah. Umistalik Moshe Mehem, and then Moshe left them. So then Moshe, uh, Aaron would go over everything uh, that he heard from Moshe four times to all who were present. And then he would leave. So the sons heard it three times from Moshe, once from Aaron. So then they would say the thing that they heard four times to all those who were present. And then they would leave from from uh, teaching. Twice from Moshe, once Aaron, once from Elazar and And then the Zakenim would go and arrange it for all the Hamon one time. Uh, one from each. Pami Moshe, Ushniya mi Aaron, Shlishish mi Bana, Urviz mi Jivim Zakenim. Mis Pazrim Ha'am, then they would disperse. Lulamid Zelaze, Masha Shamu mi Hashliach, to teach each other what they heard from the emissary. The Kosvin Hamikra Ba Megillos, and they would write the scripture in scrolls. Um, and by the way, this is something that um, that does seem undisputed, that even though you're going to say Moshe got the whole Torah at Sinai, um, the mitzvahs, I mean, Definitely, there was stuff being written in the, uh, uh, you know, the Torah Bichsav, especially the narrative parts, was not were not necessarily written down. Like, you know, Moshe didn't know, didn't have a t- uh, spoiler alert for the uh, the Miraglim incident, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and also I think some of it they say was written beforehand. Like I think, I mean, I don't think Ram says this, but I think uh, there's indications that like Brachis until Shemos was written down beforehand. I'm not sure. I hope. Um, I think by Moshe, uh, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Certainly was like authorized later, either if, if it was written down, but I'm actually not sure about it. Okay. Uh, so then the officers, which I guess these are like educational officers, dispersed into every Jewish house uh, to teach and to review until they knew the Mikra and Yaskilu Kriyaso. Okay, uh, and comprehended like with Seichel, it's Kriya. Um, keep that phrase in mind for when on uh, for the Rabag Hagdama on Wednesday. Okay, when we continue that. Um, 
umalamdim osam beir osam mikra shenitan me'es Hashem. And they would teach them the, ex- the clarification of that mikra that, that was given from Hashem. They also have beir hu klali inyanim. And this, this beir is the general ideas. Okay, this is what he's going to give an example from for later on. And they would write the mikra, the zokrim hakabala alpe. And they would remember the received explanations um, by memory, uh, by heart. That's what the Chachamim meant. So, uh, at the beginning of Parshat Bahar, Chazal say uh, that it was given, well, the Pasuk says it was given Bahar Sinai. Chazal say, what is it teaching you Bahar Sinai? Wasn't all of the Torah given at Sinai? El Elomer Lach, rather, it's to teach you Masha Shmita Neemra Kalosah Upratoseha Ubidiktu Kehav Sinai, Af Kolamitsos Neemra Kalosin Upratosin of Diktu Kehav Sinai. Doesn't that go against what he just said? Didn't he say, Oso Abir Hu Klali Inyanim? Now he's saying that it was, um, yeah, Kalosin Upratosin Vidiktu Kehav Sinai. I just noticed that now. Also, doesn't that Gemara go against the Shita? That says that, uh, like, it wasn't all given it to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they all, everyone has to contend with all the contrary of God to us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you want to just take a moment to think about what's the idea of the whole Seder Limud thing, like the, that weird way of teaching? Yeah. Right. I, I did yeah. That. He, he, like, read this and he was like, I mean, he, he was saying that it, like, he was like, why would they even have, like, like, why would they have passed this down? Even, like, even though, let's say, even let's say they actually did this, yeah. why would they have recorded it? Right. Back? And why, I mean, the Ramam clearly feels it's important to know, because yeah. he's including it here. Why yeah. doesn't the Gemara say this? What was that? Why doesn't the Gemara bring this down? Oh, it does. He's getting from yeah, it. I assume he's getting it from Gemara. Oh, yeah, right? but, yeah. yeah. I, I remember actually seeing this Gemara inside, like, five times, because I kept, I kept looking up with Josh, he kept... It came up in some other thing, and we kept forgetting what, what that we had looked up the Gemara and we confused about the Gemara. So, okay, um, right. I mean, just to ask, like a uh, klutz kasha, you know, like why didn't Moshe teach it to everyone four times? You know, or yeah, it seems like if anything, it would be reversed. Like that, the Am would get it more times. Right, they need it more. That's right, right. Yeah. yeah. Why, why did our room get a special Kabbalah session? Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe to uh, set up a hierarchy of like who has more control and more understanding of what, like make sure that it's like not just like that everyone kind of are mm. following each other. But, oh like, yeah, that, that, that's definitely like possible. I mean, I, I was my my hesitance at the beginning was that it seems like the whole thing was based on a pre-existing hierarchy, but yeah. I actually don't know to what extent that. I mean, the Zakinim were definitely already there from the time of right. Yisrael, right. it seems. And like Elazar and Itamar, um, I, were, did they have any special significance before this? I mean, their significance is based on like Kohanim stuff from the Torah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, stuff. yeah. Um, and it's also weird that it's Elazar and Itamar, but not Nadav mm. right? and Avihu, right? Oh, yeah. they, they weren't dead yet. And, and they were the ones who were singled out Weren't they the ones singled out in that, in that, uh, in what we just read? Mm. Did, did it even mention Elazar and Itamar? I know it mentioned Nadav and Avihu. No, right. it's just Moshe, Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, and the 70 elders. Huh. I just, I never thought about that either. That's weird. Yeah. Very weird. Um, so they did the course because they got a school. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. I'm yeah, so. isn't there also a Gemara that Nadav and Avihu were like the Talmudim of Moshe or something? Um, I, it could be, yeah, yeah, yeah it would stand to reason. Um, yeah. So I don't have a, uh, like a comprehensive theory about like this whole state of thing, but just one move that I think you have to make is that apparently like, it's not just that they're repeating the same words four times, right? That Moshe being a teaching it is one like level of teaching it, but then presumably our own when, uh, when, he, so Moshe teaches it to our own, then he teaches it to everyone, uh, to, to Elazar and Itamar and Aaron, and then the Zakanim and then the people. And then when Moshe leaves and Aaron teaches it to them, presumably the words that Aaron was saying were not the same words that Moshe mm-hmm. was saying. I mean, for the Mikra, yes, but it seems like he was explaining it. He, he must have been explaining it in a different way. 
And just, and, and then same thing for Lazarus and Tabernacle, and same thing with the Zucanium, and then same thing with, with people teaching at each other. And like, you know, that's definitely a phenomenon that you've all experienced with Chachamim. Like, you know, the Rosh Yeshiva gives a shear, and like the top guys get it. I mean, we experienced this on, on, on Shavuot shear back in the day when we had like legions of, uh, like everyone used to come, come in and like, they're always like, there's always a very blatant hierarchy of like the Rosh Hashiva and then like his top Talmidim and then like the ancillary Talmidim who were like the top Talmidim of those guys. And then like all of us lowly uh, uh, Hamonam, you know? And the way it would work is like, everyone would be listening to this year from the Rosh Hashiva and people would be getting different things and understanding in different ways. And then like, after the shear was over, between day one of shear and day two of shear, when we'd be reviewing, so like, we would like huddle around and like the top Talmudim would explain certain things. And we'd be like, oh, that's what he was saying, but then we still wouldn't understand other stuff. And then we would be too ashamed to ask, uh, which is bad. And then we would ask like their Talmudim, and then we would like talk about amongst each other. So it's all the same content, but depending on who you are as a Talmud and who you are as a Rebbe, you're, you're receiving it or giving it at different levels of clarity or different levels of explanation, uh, even though it's exactly the same content. And that's the same thing with uh, any area of Chachma, you know, like, like you can, you know, you can have a, uh, uh, a physicist giving a physics lecture uh, to a, a group of physicists. And among the physicists, there's a physics teacher and the physics teacher explains it to the physics students and the physics students explain it to like their lay people, their, their lay friends, you know, and it's all the same content but being filtered into, on different right. levels, you know. Yeah, it's like they're, they're raising the water level. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's all I got. I mean, I, see, I, see. I don't know why it had to be this. I don't know why specifically these people. I mean, one question that will come up later on um, is I think you asked the Jewish, the average Jewish school child of Moshe received the Torah from Sinai and he gave it to blank and then he gave it to the Zikanim. Who's the blank, mm -hmm. right? And the people say Yehoshua, mm -hmm. right? Because people are familiar with Avos. So where's Yehoshua in all of this? And like, where, where do Aaron and his sons gain a prominent role in the passing down of the Masorah? Like, yeah. Like that, that's like, okay, fine, they're Kohanim, I get it, right? But, you know, in, in this, the teaching of the, and, and yeah, they're teachers, Kohanim are teachers. So maybe it's not Masora, maybe it's teaching. Like there are a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot more questions we can ask on this whole uh, setup here. Would you assume we're sitting here? I asked a question. Yeah. Um, I pointed out around, uh, uh, earlier that, this that 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 that's what I'm looking at, but there's one, like, I'm just going to get an emotion, and that, that's really what I mean. And so and what do you think I am? Motion got inserted in your head, and then he was even over to Ireland in the whole process, and then they were even in the end. But then it's kind of like it was even in one shot. I mean, okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not understanding the implications of what you're saying, but just to... Either this will, maybe you'll point out what I'm, what I'm missing here, is that that would seem like, if you say that Moshe got Klali Hainyanin at Sinai, and then he like distilled that into the Klali Sein and the Like, is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm just saying it sounds like that, that, that when I'm, I, I think he, he got all of them from not just the Klali, but all of them, not the same Hainyanin from from God, but when they say you see that, they don't mean it in one shot. Oh, okay. I've done it. We asked before that, like, when he was uh, other times in the photo when it was, uh -huh. when it seemed like it was one shot. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a route you can take of like expanding what you mean by at Sinai, because this member that he ended off that paragraph with it does make it sound like he got it all in one shot. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I'm not sure. Uh, one thing I also want to do is look at, not now, but look at Avram and Ralem's commentary on the psukim that have to do with Moshe getting the Torah and see if he like clarifies things, you know. All right, but now let's go to our, 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 uh, the, our main course for today, which is this mushroom, this one mushroom.
I will give you an example, and this is going to be an example of what it means, um, the Mikra and the Perush, which is Torah Shabbat Peh. Amr Hashem, Amr Hashem, uh, Amr Hashem, uh, you shall dwell in Sukkos for seven days. Okay, so that's what Hashem said to Moshe. The Gam Hodio Hashem Yisala, Shesukkos Zo, Chobos Hazacharim, Velo Nakevos. Uh, he also informed him that the sukkah is an obligation on men, not women. And you have, uh, you're, you know, the sick people are exempt and people who are traveling are exempt. And we only cover it in schach from something that grows from the earth. We don't uh, use uh, wool or silk or kalim for schach. Even things that grow from the ground, like uh, I think those are mats. And uh, and clothing. And eating, drinking, uh, and, and sleeping are in it for all seven days. And its dimensions can, uh, or talo, its airspace can only uh, can't be less than seven tefachim wide, uh, long by seven tefachim wide. And the height can't be less than ten tefachim. The, uh, so when, when the Shliach came, he received this mitzvah and its explanation. So that's our working example of Torah Shabbat Peh, right? So you have the Torah, which is Torah Shabbat that just says, In Sukkot you shall dwell for seven days. But the questions are abundant. What is a Sukkah? Who is it talking to? Um, you know, uh, what, uh, what sukkah means covering, right? I mean, booth, but like comes from schach. So what can be covered with? How big is it? How do you make it? You know, who's exempt? Um, all of these questions are, how do you implement the teaching that is Torah Shabbat mm-hmm. And that's what he meant in the Mishnah Torah when he said, mm-hmm. which is you're commanded to do Torah Shabbat via Torah Shabbat Peh. Um, and that's something where, like, for example, there are lots of ways to fulfill Basuko Stage for Shiva Siyamim, right? You can make a tent, okay? You can have women do it. You can, there are lots of conceivable ways that you could carry out the teaching of sit in, in, in booths for seven days. But the only one we're commanded to do it by is the Torah Shabbat Peh version, you know? And that's why I think that's why the and, and, and I mean, this is not a full answer, but that, that's the sense in which the Torah of is the mitzvah. And the Torah of is just the teaching. Right. You know, that the thing that makes it actionable is Torah of because there are so many different ways that you can implement it in, in Torah of Al-Pah. And that's where you have Karaites, that's where you have Tzedukim, that's where you have Reform, Conservative, you know, everyone just taking the words of the Torah of Al-Pah, and then they're doing it not Al-P Torah of Al-Pah, but Al-P Datam, you know, based on their own minds. Yeah. But really, really, there seems to be this, um, even if you're using gear versus, um, versus parish clothes, really. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was only that first line that made me think he was saying something Davka with the three. Perusho, Viru, Vukumaham, Kala, Osa, Mikra, Mahukam, you know? And I, I don't even know if that's true. Maybe he was just, yeah. Um, right. So now we have an idea. I mean, again, we haven't even seen this in the Ramam yet, but when he's going to say later on that Mishnah Torah is, you'll know Torah Shabbat Peh Kula, he certainly means this, mm-hmm. meaning that everything in Torah Shabbat Sav that is a mitzvah, you will know how to, all of the what questions and how questions for how to do it, um, translated into practical terms that were given from Sinai. Cool. Yeah. Okay, let's finish the Pirish Mishnah. I included these last couple of paragraphs because it, 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 it's the end of the account of, of how Torah was passed down. V'kasher higia sof arbaim shana barosh chodesh shvat. When the end of the 40 years ar- uh, arrived on Rosh Chodesh Shvat, he kilam alav shalom, so he gathered them. V'amr lahem, and he said, Hein karvu yamai lamus, I am about to die. L'chein mi shashama mimeni ezu kabala v'shachacha, so anyone who, who received a, a, a teaching and, um, and forgot it, come to me and I will explain it to him. Um, interesting that, that Moshe, there's no hierarchy here, right? Like he didn't say like, okay, go ask this game. If they can't answer it, then ask the, you know. Uh, anyone who has, has any doubt about a shayla, um, 
uh, come and, uh, and, and, uh, and I'll explain it to him, or we will explain it. I don't know why I say it's Nevar right now. Amar Kasuv, Hoyu Moshe Be'eras HaTorah. So it says in the beginning of Devarim, I think it's a Pasuk 5, Moshe began to clarify this Torah saying, Akach Amar Kachamim Besifri, Kol Mi Shishachach Halacha Achas, Yavo V'yashane, V'chol Mi Shishlo L'farish, Yavo V'yafarish. Right, <laughs> the double phrase again, right? So anyone who, or actually not double phrase, anyone who forgot a Halacha, come and I will, and, and, uh, and um, he'll teach it, and anyone who, who uh, needs ex- explanation, come in and it will be explained. Ubiru mipi mipi hakabala v'lamdu hapirushim kol so hazmanshim mirosh chodesh shvat ashvi ba'adar. So he clarified. Um, it was clarified from his mouth the tradition, and he taught it all of the pirushim all the time from rosh chodesh shvat until uh, the shvi of Adar. Lifnei moso nis asik b'ksiva, and before he died, he was involved in writing because of shlosha asar sifrei Torah kulam gvilim. Uh, mean Bezmi Breshis ad Lamed Yisrael, Lamed Yisrael. Okay, so he's taking a stance on that. Uh, who wrote the last Pesukim of the Torah, right? So he wrote the entire Torah, 13 of them, Vinasan, and I, that's another thing I never got. Like, he must have had superhuman writing ability. Yeah, I don't find it. Right, doesn't it take like a really long time to write one Sefer Torah? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about uh, Rosh Right, good. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah we'll ru- right, right. Right. Well, so, you know, we're joking about it, but that's actually Ruach Hashem. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Ruach HaKodesh is the yeah. knowledge. Ruach Hashem is action. Yeah. yeah. And that would be an area, I guess, where Ruach Hashem would apply. I just don't know how it physically works. Yeah. Vanasan Sefer Lachol Shevet Shiznahe Galpiv gave one scroll to each uh, of the Shvatim to conduct themselves with. Vashlosha Asar Nasnu. Uh, the and he gave the thirteenth to the Levim. But Amar lahem lakoch es sefer Torah hazev uh, Take this sefer Torah, etc. Va'ala el har b'chati yom shvi b'adar, and he went up to uh, the har at uh, at Chatos on the seventh day of Adar. Kamosh nispar b'kvala, as it is explained in the tradition. Ba'ezem moso biyachas elenu shenifkad mi'itano. Weird phrase here. And this was uh, his death in relation to us. I don't know what that means. Shenifkad mi'itano. Uh, that he was, uh, he was, I guess, taken from us. V'chaim biya, oh yeah, v'chaim biyachas elav, but it was life to him. Shinis ala elav, because he went up to God. I, think, I assume that's to God. Um, in other words, at that point, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. amru alayhi mashalam, Moshe Rabbeinu lo mes, ala ala umashamash b'maram. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't die, he went up to serve on high. Okay, so that's, that's an elaborate idea, and this is not their place, yeah. I mean, I assume that the basic gist of it is that Moshe Rabbeinu was, you know, Ram says he was almost like a malach in the sense of how not um, affected by the trappings of physicality, um, and clearly his intellect was like, you know, as close as you can get to a uh, Seichel Nivdal, like the separate intellect, and so it's just like, for him, like, it's, it's more like a leveling up, not like dying and, you know, it's not like a, a loss. It's getting to, to shed this, like, physicality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But apparently it's a, a very deep idea. As he says, Oh, Yeshua finally shows up. Uh, when, once he died, he had already uh, transmitted to Yeshua uh, the Pirushim that were given to him. The Asku Behem Yeshua of Anshe Doro. And so Yeshua and the men of his generation involved themselves in it. Hu O Echad Hazakanim. Ain bo maso matan, lo nachla bo machlokus. Okay, uh, brace yourself. Um, uh, anything that was received from him um, or one of the zakenim that has no debate and there's no machlokus on. Oh, sorry, sorry. I think he means the other way around, right? Anything that doesn't have machlokus. Uh, well, everything that they, that, you, that they received? Yeah. The machlokus didn't happen to it. Right. And that which was not received from the Navi, meaning Moshe, there are in its branches, um, there's debate. And, uh, and its halacha was learned out through the methods of analysis of the 13 Midos that were given to him at Sinai. And these are the 13 Midos that the Torah is expounded through. Yeah. Hiskimu kulam alehim, and among those things that were learned, I assume you mean from the thirteen midos, 
there are matters which no machlokas uh, fell upon, uh, but rather all of them agreed upon. And some of them were subject to machlokas between two opinions. And through the various methods of logic and debate, then these results happened. And when they had a machlokas, they followed the majority. Uh, like the Puzzle says, follow the majority. Yeah. Hmm. All righty. So that is that. Um, and let's just see. Um, Oopsies, uh, I just closed that. Uh, I just want to do two more halakhas on the Ramam, I think, um, because that'll take, or three more halakhas, because uh, that'll take us up through the equivalent point that we just went through in the Hagdam of the Bishma Shnaios. So Bayes, he says, Kola Torah, Kasva Moshe Rabbeinu Kodem Shiyamus Biksav Yado. So the entire Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu wrote it before he died in his own handwriting. And uh, I think it's laid, not laad, right? Um, he, uh, one safer he put, it says laid, right? Yeah. Okay. Put one safer in the Aaron for a uh, witness or testimony. It says, um, I think it's on the side. Yeah, there's machlokas uh, in the Gemara, I think, uh, or machlokas we've shown him about whether it was on the side or in. The Aron. Um, it could be on the side in the Aron, but also the reading. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, meaning if it's inside the testimony. Right. Yeah, inside. yeah. but, I, but it, I think it does end up being Machlokas also. Like, according to one side, I think there is another compartment, mm. right, that it was like resting on. I think, I don't know. The mitzvah, which is the Perish Torah, he did not write. Rather, he commanded it to the elders and to Yeshua and the rest of the nation. So whoever said, uh, wasn't Yeshua one of the elders? So you could read this both ways, right? <laughs> that, uh, that, that he is including the elders, but he's being singled out because he's like the leader. Or is Yeshua's one group and the elders are another group? Um, which is together with, with the on? Oh, Ula Sharko Israel. Well, for the whole process, yeah, right. Yeah, it could be. And the other thing also is like Yeshua, the only role he plays, I mean, not the only role he plays, I don't want to diminish him, but like where before he becomes Moshe's successor, so we see him telling Moshe the news about the Egel. And we see him, right? Um, I think he, I think Shem singled him out to like go further closer up the mountain. Mm -hmm. He singled out in, in that regard, right? And he, and he is hmm. he he is identified as the Masharis Moshe, you know. Uh, but uh, so it could be that in the original plan of no Maraglim, then like you know maybe Yeshua wouldn't have had that. Role. I mean, it's it's uh, it's All right. Shnemar es kol hadavar she anochi mitzave eschem also sishmur lasos umipnei nikre umipnei zed nikre es pa. So that's very funny, right? I mean, he's saying he he's explaining why it's called torch pa here, right? The fact that they didn't write it down. It's an interesting ordering here. Yeah, I mean that makes sense given what he said, which is it's a mitzvah, but it is still interesting. Um, well, I, I do want to return to this tomorrow, though. I just want that to be our second time. So let's just finish reading uh, one more halakha here. Afo pishel nichtva torch ba pe limda Moshe Rabbeinu kula bebeistin shel l'shim zikim. Right, so another verb here. Moshe taught it in its entirety to his beistin to the seventy zikim. The Elazar upinchas v'yoshua shlosh dan kiblu mi Moshe. So now we got three guys. Elazar, where's the Tamar? I don't know. Pinchas, he wasn't here before. And then Yoshua, three of them received it from Moshe. Yoshua, shu tamido shel Moshe Rabbeinu, masar torsh wal peh. What? <laughs> Didn't he just say? So now it's, it's masar, right? So we got limda and we got masar. Right. That, to, so the three, so Moshe taught it in his basin. The three guys were makabel from him. And then to Yoshua alone, he was Masar Torshba Peh, Vitsiva Aleha, and commanded on it. Uh, I don't know. Bechain Yoshua, Koi Mechayev, Limed Al Peh. Yeah, all right, this is a good place to stop for today. Yeah, all right, well, we got, we got some work cut out for us. Yeah. yeah.
All right. And again, I will we'll have to decide. I don't know how far in depth we're going into these things. I mean, I think the way we've been doing it so far of like bringing up the questions, throwing around possibilities, uh, and then moving on, I think is a good move. Because if not, we just, this will become an Ian Shear of going into depth endlessly mm -hmm. in, in the ROM, you know, mm -hmm. and that'd be fun, but that would not be the name yeah. of the game. I have a tangent question. Um, yeah, I sure. So you said that everything that no training, he said, um, the Tomas Kibu and who or how to say name, Ingo Masa Matan, the low knuckle bomb of focus. Yeah. No one holds anything on the Gotham Lord Then he said, um, a lot later, the Nilmad Bill Basin, but roughly even the shorter term, you need to know the Sinai. The hand gives only as you're trying to go to So presumably, then the using is don't have any of the hopeless on them because. <laughs> right, that's yeah, funny. But there, but there is. Yeah, there right. Is no, like, I mean, I I think you can even read the wrong on that. That's not what he's saying because he's he's. You could read him to say that um, when he says anything that there's no makalokas on, he's talking about in, in terms of halacha. So there's no halacha about things they often see in either. That's a separate question. Because yeah. according to the wrong, there's not. Right, according to the wrong, there's no makalokas anything they got from Sinai. Well, he's saying they got the the from Sinai. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And then, oh, yeah, I mean, there is the whole, something is over right, but I, th I feel like that's a separate question, though. Meaning, the the question of um, of content, torsional pet content they got from Sinai versus the methods, and I, I understand that there's a, that there's a contradiction or not contradiction in their question because of the Machalokas and the Ugolimios, but I feel like it's a separate question. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm saying it's like a pending question. Yeah, yeah. It's not... Yeah, it's a good yeah. question. Alrighty, see you guys uh, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>